Parc Nacional Ordesa y Monte Perdido. Little Spanish lesson. So perdido in Spanish means to be lost. So perhaps it's named um, uh, for people getting lost in these mountains, which is probably quite possible because uh, they're they're pretty intense. Interesting, you know. So the um, um, Muslims came across and settled for 800 years in the Iberian Peninsula, and it was the Pyrenees that basically stopped. Actually, it was a military. Um, military uh, that stopped them, but but the natural boundary was the Pyrenees Mountains from being able to expand further west into Europe. So today uh, we are going to get on the Senda de los Cazadores. Cazadores means hunters. Now there's a bunch of trails down here that you can access. There's one trail, actually there's a bunch of trails. One of the trails you can stay low uh, and, and it basically follows the lower part. Uh, we'll call it the valley, the, the bottom of the valley floor. So you can go up on one side, come back on the other side, see the river, see the waterfalls at the end of it. And it's a nice, uh, even, easy grade. We chose to take uh, this trail which takes you almost felt like you're going straight up the bloody mountain which was pretty arduous I mean it was clearly an advanced a good strong intermediate could do it uh, but but I would say it, it it's it's an advanced trail also the length of time I mean it's a they mark it as a seven hour hike I would say that we did it maybe in six hours five and a half six hours Also, a word of caution. So, I don't care how lovely the forecast sounds, um, how nice the weather is when you wake up and you get here, even if the people in the hotel tell you it's going to be a beautiful day, you don't need rain gear. Take rain gear, take food supplies, um, and take something warm. Weather in these types of mountain areas can change on a dime and it can get you into some serious trouble. Uh, we did listen to our host, which was an avid, who was a avid hiker, and he said, oh, you don't need, you don't need the rain gear, you don't need the rain gear, so I didn't want to schlep it, and sure enough, boy, uh, uh, the weather did change, and um, fortunately, it didn't rain on us too much, um, but it was enough to remind me that take, take, take extra safety precautions and equipment with you. It's just beautiful up here. I mean, we're probably, I think it was a 7,000 foot rise that we had. So I think we're probably close to 12,000 feet, maybe it's certainly 10,000. So there are a few of these little shacks. I think in the old days, they were probably for the um, hunters, goat herders. Um, now I think they're used by hikers should they get into, into an emergency situation in, in this, probably more so in the snow. This is a great lookout. I believe it was a Englishman, group of Englishmen that mapped and cataloged this area. I think there's a couple of uh, plaques uh, named in their honor. Now, it, it was in 1997 that this was uh, a, a World Heritage Site, and I, th I think because of the Biosphere Reserve. So once you finally get up to the top, which feels like you're going straight up, um, this trail levels off, and it's a very nice gradual descent downward. Uh, towards the valley. So once you get to the top, this part is uh, quite comfortable to do. It's also a little bit more open so you can actually have a uh, little bit better viewpoints. Yeah, I think there are, we, we went up the Senda de los Cazadores and Cola de Caballo. Uh, cola, tail, caballo, uh, horse, tail of the horse. Now just if you are a hiker, I did find a pretty nice website uh, 
alltrails.com has uh, looks like they have uh, free uh, hiking trails of different regions and I believe it's like all over the world uh, I did I looked at it f uh, for my research for uh, the Pyrenees uh, and I've seen I've seen that website before so if you are an avid hiker and you want to get maps and descriptions of hiking trails that's a good website to go to also we home base it in Torla, which is probably a maybe a 10-50 minute uh, bus ride from the town to the parking area. It seems that they don't allow you to bring in your own car into the park. I think they control it at different times of the year. They must allow it because I saw a pretty big parking lot and it almost looked like a parking lot for uh, vans where people could like camper vans where people would stay so um, that I'm not sure certainly when we went you were not allowed to bring in your car and you had to take the shuttle I, I suspect perhaps because of the volume of people they have to control the amount of pollution cars that come into the park I mean there is a guard shack uh, um, ent entrance to the park so you're you're not going to slide your car past so the area is peppered with all types of uh, hiking trails we met a group of hikers and they were more backcountry hikers and i had the impression and they weren't real clear about it but it sound, sounded as if what they did is they go further into the interior of the park or maybe they found or no ways outside of the park because they went back country and camping if you will in, in into the mountainous areas so I wasn't real sure whether because usually these parks don't allow uh, overnight camping a little bit uh, regulated Yeah, it's also referred to as the Spanish uh, Pyrenees. And I think Torla, the little town, um, is a great little home base if you are wanting to really explore the area and and stay in, in a more authentic um, Middle Ages uh, town, village. The shuttle was, I don't think it was, it was either free or it was cheap enough to take the shuttle from the town to the park entry. Now this part of the trail is pretty well marked. There were a couple of areas where streams uh, kind of washed it out and it got a little bit muddier. Uh, we started, it was nice and sunny. And as the day progressed, it got wetter and cooler. And we were here in um, August or 1st of September. It was nice that it wasn't inundated with lots of people so one could have time to contemplate.
Yeah, so the mountains, the Pyrenees Mountains, uh, provided a natural barrier from the expansion of the Moors into Western Europe. So that's why for 800 years they settled into the Iberian Peninsula. Don't think this area was very well settled. We don't see your typical Roman um, features or towns or settlements. So it looked more like this is uh, developed uh, in the Middle Ages. So on a hike like this, the standard is at minimum, minimum is uh, two liters of water and uh, ideally more like three to four because if you are not conditioned, you can get altitude uh, sickness. See, even, even though we're, we're still pretty high up here. I think it's uh, six again, six about a six hour hike to go down and then to, to get down to the bottom of the valley and then stay in the bottom of the valley floor back to uh, the trailhead, the beginning. That gives you a nice, that's a nice uh, perspective, a nice shot. This is a lot longer than my typical videos and oh, I suppose for somebody who is really considering this adventure, this is going to give you a more in-depth look at what the actual, this actual trail is. Now you can get excellent information on all the trails, which ones to do, their difficulties, in Torla, there's a, a bunch of, uh, or a number of outfitters, hiking outfitter places. I mean, also the park is going to have pretty good information. I think that part you're looking at uh, uh, France or pretty close to France. See, there's there's the weather blowing in. Like I said, we started, it was like a bright, sunny, warm looking day. So we started way down in that valley and went all the way up. That's a long way. Worth a picture. Continue our descent. Now you can um, see the waterfalls. Um, I didn't think too much of them, maybe because depending on the small snow melt and the time of the year, uh, we were also pretty tired by the time we had finished the elevation rise and then the descent down to the valley. It just didn't seem like it was, we could see it from a distance. And there are actually a bunch of little little waterfalls all over the place because um, even in the summertime there's still snow on top of these mountains. There's a that would be a stream.
Nice trails. Well worked out. time you finish this video you're gonna feel like you you walked a mountain with me So now we start our return back. It sort of ends in this little valley. A walk amongst the gods. be the waterfalls so this part this is what I mean that it's fairly well developed I think they made this accessible for anybody and everyone I don't know if it's wheelchair compliant but um, but it's but it's certainly for uh, people of moderate physical capabilities can do this the lower hike So we did come, we went up one direction and we're coming back in another one, another direction. Um, so we're not on the same trail. So we are doing a loop and each segment of the loop is different. So you can see that this lower part of the trail is pretty well worked out. Judging by the size of the parking lot, I mean, they, they look like they have some pretty good sized tours that come in here. You're happy by the time you get back. close to the end. I actually did a painting of the, one of these waterfalls, one of the smaller water, which is really more of a, a stream, a drop in the stream elevation. So that brings us back to kind of the beginning here. Remember to subscribe and like.